Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Dr. Archer's Lectures. You'll recall that the last time we were together, we were talking about Farmer Jack and the problems that he was having producing this wheat on his field. What he found, if you'll recall, was that as he added more workers, at first his production increased dramatically from zero to a thousand bushels when he added just one worker. But as time went on, each new worker added fewer and fewer bushels. You see that the second worker added only 800 more bushels to the total, not as many as the first. And by the third worker, this worker only adds only 600 more bushels, and this one adds only 400 more, and the fifth one adds only 200 more. And although our chart doesn't go that far, you can see that if we added a sixth worker, we likely wouldn't have any increase in production at all. If you recall, this had to do with diminishing marginal product of labor. As you keep adding workers, as you keep adding workers, the, the increase in output from each additional work, worker gets to be smaller and smaller and smaller. And this has to do with things like there aren't enough resources to go around, there aren't enough tools, there aren't, isn't enough space. People are in each other's ways. So this is the diminishing product of labor. And it's always the case over time. And so your production function looks like this. In the early going, it's very steep, but it keeps flattening and flattening and flattening until here we get very little increase at all. And on the next one, we wouldn't get any increase. That's an interesting thing to consider when you consider that Farmer Jack is probably going to have to pay each of these workers the same amount of money. So even though with the first worker output increased by a thousand bushels, and with the second worker output increased by only 800 bushels, he probably has to pay the first worker and the second worker the same amount for the day's work. What does that do to his cost structure? Let's take a look. Here's the, the cost structure. Let me move this so that you can see better. Oops, sorry. Farmer Jack's total cost curve, let's say that he has fixed costs of $1,000. We're going to talk at length about fixed costs by the time this lecture is over. But for now, let's just say that that's the cost of things like his land and equipment that he has to pay up front before he can have any production. So that's this first $1,000. So even when he has zero output, he's already has these costs, $1,000. Now for each worker, he pays another $2,000. So when he has one worker, his costs increase from 1,000 to 3,000. When, when he has two workers, he adds another worker, they go up by $2,000 again, up by $2,000, up by $2,000, up by $2,000. And so his cost curve looks like this. His cost compared to the quantity of wheat is increasing very rapidly because even though when he goes from his second to his third worker, his cost is production only increases by 800 bushels, his costs go up by 2,000. And when he increases from his third to his fourth, his quantity only goes up by 600, but his costs still go up by 2,000. His quantity isn't increasing anywhere near as fast as his costs. And that is going to be problematic at some point. Remember we were thinking about that, that the way that it was looking that if you added a sixth worker, he wouldn't get any additional output, and yet he would still have to pay that worker the $2,000 just like everybody else. 
somewhere along the line here, the cost of adding that extra worker is less than what he could expect to sell the wheat for. And that's when it becomes a problem for his business. So what we're really talking about right there, what we're talking about is marginal cost. The, the increase in total cost from producing one more unit. So back on the previous slide, when we, when we were producing 2,400 units, our total cost was $7,000. If we want to produce any more, we're going to increase, our total costs are going to go up to $9,000. And that's what we're talking about. What is that increase going to cost us? And you find the marginal cost by dividing the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. Change in total cost divided by change in quantity. So let's kind of look at that a little bit more here. So here, at zero output, farmer Jack's co total costs are 1,000. When he adds one worker, he gets 1,000 bushels of wheat in output for that, but his costs increase to, to 3,000. So what's his marginal cost? Well, his change in total cost is $2,000. And his change in output is $1,000. Marginal cost, remember, is change in total cost divided by change in output. So it's 2,000 total change in total cost divided by 1,000 change in quantity. So you get a marginal cost of $2. So what about at the next level? When he goes from one worker to two workers, his output increases by 800 and his costs increase by 2000 So here, change in total cost once again is 2000 This time, his change in quantity, his change in output, is only 800 2000 divided by 800 change in total quantity divided by change, I mean change in total cost divided by change in quantity, gives you a marginal cost of $2.50. Wow, those additional units cost us $2.50 each. It's a lot more than they cost before. Let's see if that continues. What if we add a third worker? The third worker, our quantity increases from 800 to 2400, an increase of 600. But our costs increase by 2000 just like they always do when we add another worker. So our change in total cost <clears throat> is 2000 divided by our change in quantity of 600 gives us a marginal cost of 333. I don't like where this is headed from a cost standpoint. This is really starting to increase and it's increasing at a faster and faster rate. You notice that the increase from here to here is only 50 cents. The increase from here to here is 83 cents. Let's see what happens next. So when we add the fourth worker, our quantity increases by only 400, but our total cost once again increases by 2,000, the cost of hiring another worker Change in total cost, 2,000, divided by change in quantity, 400, gives us marginal cost of $5. Whoa. And if we do this once again, it's even worse. It actually doubles. We've got total cost change of 2,000, because we hired another worker, but we only got 200 more quantity out of that. So now our marginal cost is $10, $10. So what's that marginal cost curve gonna look like here? Well, it usually rises as quantity rises as it does in this example. 
and it goes up faster and faster. In the early going, it went from 2 to 250, and then 250 to 333, and then it really picked up speed. 330 viewed 5, 5 to 10. It's really coming up. And this is a classic marginal cost curve. A marginal cost curve always looks like a J. It's this shape. And so you'll be presented with uh, graphs where different curves are there, and you'll be asked to identify the various curves. The one that looks like a J is the marginal cost curve. Now, why do we care? Because if we're going to consider whether to increase our production, we have to know what that next unit, what is it going to cost to produce one more unit. And that's marginal cost. Marginal cost tells us what will it cost to produce one more unit. To make that decision about whether or not to increase production, we're going to compare that marginal cost, the cost of producing one more unit, to the price that we expect to be able to sell that extra unit for. If we can sell it for more than it costs us, great, let's produce another unit. If it's going to cost us more than we can sell it for, no dice, no dice. Marginal cost is an important cost. It tells us how much will it cost for us to produce one more unit. But we also have to look at total cost. And total cost is made up of two other categories of cost. The first of these, oops, sorry. The first of these is fixed costs. Fixed costs are the costs that don't change when you change the level of output. So for instance, if I had a house and my monthly mortgage payment is $1,500 a month, my mortgage payment stays the same whether I'm living there alone even if I have 30 of my closest friends come and stay with me, so my output has increased to 30, but my mortgage doesn't change. It's still the same, 1,500 a month. And it also is the same even if I decide to take a vacation in the south of France and I lock that house up and there's no one there. We have zero output at the house still even still, that mortgage payment remains the same at $1,500. That's the nature of a fixed cost. It does not change with the level of production. Things that are typically fixed costs include things like rent or mortgage on the facility, equipment costs, sometimes insurance, those kinds of things that just don't depend on how much you're producing. The other kind of cost, oh, for Farmer Jack, his fixed cost was $1,000 for his land. And you remember when we looked at that chart right at the beginning, even when his output was zero, even when he hadn't yet begun to produce wheat, he still had $1,000 in cost because he had this mortgage on his land. And there are some other examples of fixed costs, many of which I've already discussed. So the other kind of cost is a variable cost. Variable costs change with the level of output. The more you produce, the greater your variable costs. So for Farmer Jack, he has certain uh, materials that go into producing the wheat, such as seed and things like that. Those would all be variable costs. And he also had the cost of those workers. Remember that every time his output increased, he had to pay an additional worker. And that's an example of a variable cost.
So when you add those two together, the fixed costs plus the variable costs, that equals your total cost. So a very important distinction here. Make a note of this. When output drops all the way to zero, we're producing nothing. Our fixed costs remain. Remember, Farmer Jack still had to pay his $1,000 mortgage on his land, even though he wasn't yet producing wheat. So we still have fixed costs. But our variable costs go to zero. He didn't have to pay any workers if he wasn't producing any wheat. He didn't need them yet. And so at output zero, when output is zero, fixed costs and total costs are the same. They're the same because variable costs are zero. So if total costs equals fixed costs plus variable costs, and fixed costs equal $20, and variable costs equals zero, then total cost will also be $20. Fixed costs and variable costs are the same only when output is zero. As soon as you start producing things, your variable cost goes up and that's no longer true. So let's look at it a little bit more. So in this example, our fixed costs are $100. And the beauty of fixed costs is they stay the same no matter how much you produce. So that whether you're producing zero or whether you're producing seven units, your fixed costs are always the same. So accordingly, on the graph, your fixed cost curve is a horizontal line. It's $100. It's $100 at zero output. It's $100 at two. It's $100 at six. It's $100 at four, at seven. Doesn't matter how much output, it's always going to be 100. So that horizontal line is your fixed cost. By contrast, your variable costs increase as your output increases. So it starts out at zero. You don't have any variable costs when you don't have any output. But as soon as you start to produce something, the first unit, the variable costs are 70, and then 120, and then 160, 210, and they just keep going up. The more you produce, the greater your variable costs. And so that curve looks like this starts at zero, it goes up kind of fast right at the very first, then it kind of, it kind of flattens out a little bit, and then, but then after a while, it starts increasing sharply, increasing sharply. So now the last cost curve that we have to look at is our total cost. So first of all, Let's take a minute and calculate our total cost. If fixed cost is 100 and variable cost is zero, what's our total cost? 100 plus zero equals 100. When at output one, if fixed costs are still 100 as they always are, but now we have variable costs of 70, then our total cost is 170. Fixed cost plus variable cost equals total cost. And it goes that way all the way down. You're going to add your fixed cost and your variable cost to get your total cost. So as you might guess, the total cost curve looks a lot like your variable cost curve, but it's just higher just like that. And this distance between them is $100. The difference between variable cost and fixed cost is, I mean, variable cost and total cost is fixed cost. 
So these two curves are $100, $100 apart. Marginal cost, you remember that? Marginal cost is the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. So when we go from 0 to 1, we increase our quantity from 0 to 1, our total cost changes from 100 to 170. So that's a change of 70. And our quantity changed from 0 to 1, so that's a change of 1. Change in total cost, 70, divided by change in quantity, 1, equals 70. And that's our marginal cost right here. When we go, when we increase our quantity from 1 to 2, our total cost increases from 170 to 220. So that's an increase of $50. And our quantity increased from 1 to 2. That's an increase of 1. Change in total cost, 50, divided by change in quantity, 1, gives us a marginal cost of $50. And that's calculated in that way all the way down. Marginal cost rises as the quantity rises. And we talked about why, right? Because each new worker increases the total output by a smaller and smaller amount. So it causes our marginal cost to rise. But sometimes, as here, Marginal cost falls a little before it goes back up. And here's your marginal cost curve. Again, it looks like a J, just like that. That's your marginal cost curve. So marginal cost tells us the cost to produce one more. Total cost told, tells us the total cost it will the total of what it will cost to produce the entire production run total cost within total cost there are two components fixed costs which remain the same at all levels of output and variable costs which change with the level of output but together they make up total cost and total cost is big picture what does it cost us to produce this entire production run? So marginal cost is very, very narrowly focused. What's it cost to produce one more? Total cost looks at what did the whole production run cost us? What if we wanted to know more about what does each unit cost us? Now we've just talked about that the marginal cost is going to increase and the marginal cost increases due to the diminishing marginal product of labor. So marginal cost is always going to increase. So if the first unit costs us $2 to produce and the next unit costs us $2.50 and the following unit costs us $3, we can assume that our average cost is going to be increasing over time even if you look at all of these together right your your average cost we would need to know our cost per unit overall our cost per unit across the entire production run our marginal cost is increasing our total costs uh stay are increasing as our output increases, if we choose to produce seven units, what is our per unit cost across all those units? That's what the averages are about. So again, we can look at average costs as average total cost, average fixed cost, the fixed costs stay the same no matter how many units you produce, and the average variable cost cost. So here we're looking at the average fixed cost.
the way that we find average fixed cost is we take fixed cost and divide it by quantity. It's just the fixed cost per unit. So fixed cost divided by quantity. And so as you can see, at one unit of output, our fixed costs, our average fixed costs are 100. Fixed costs, 100, divided by quantity, 1. 100 divided by 1 is 100. But when we produce two units, our fixed costs are still 2. I mean, are still 100, but now we're going to divide by 2. So our average fixed cost, our fixed cost per unit, is cut in half to 50. Let's pump it up to three. At three, fixed costs remain the same at 100, but now we're dividing by our quantity of three, so no, now our average fixed cost is 33.33. Our fixed cost per unit is getting smaller and smaller, and it will keep getting smaller forever because our fixed cost remains the same but we're dividing by a larger and larger and larger quantity. So it will keep getting smaller. Sometimes you hear business people talk about increasing their, their quantity so they can spread their costs over more production. This is what they're talking about. They're talking about their fixed costs. They can drive down their fixed costs per unit by producing more units. And so your fixed cost curve looks like this. If you're only making one unit, it's 100 bucks. The second unit is 50, the third unit is 33, 33, fourth unit is 25, and it keeps tailing off. It doesn't drop by as much later, but it will continue to drop forever. So this will just slowly diminish over time forever. And that's what your fixed cost, average fixed cost curve looks like, average fixed cost. Now you will remember that your fixed cost curve is a horizontal line because that's our fixed cost no matter how much we produce. But this is our average fixed cost it's telling us how much per unit our fixed costs are. So as we divide by more and more units, it keeps falling. So let's look at average variable costs. Same thing. Um, our variable costs are increasing, but we're also going to divide by ever-increasing quantities. So average variable cost is simply variable costs divided by quantity. And so the first unit, the variable cost is $70. The second unit, our variable costs here are $120, but we're dividing by two. So for two units, our average variable cost, our variable cost per unit is only $60. When we go to three units, our variable cost is 160, our quantity is three, 160 divided by three, our average variable cost is 53.33. Our variable cost per unit will always simply divide by the quantity. So as quantity rises, Average variable costs may fall a little, but then it rises as output rises. And you can see that in the numbers here. 70, 60, 53, 52, then it starts going back up. 56, 63, 74. And your average variable cost curve looks like this. This is in a kind of a narrow range. It only goes from, from 52 up to 70. So it's not a big swooping curve. It's just a little bit of a curve right here. And finally, we have the average total cost curve. 
same thing, but there are two ways to get to it. Before, well, well, before we go into that, let's think about it the way we've thought about all the others. Average total cost is simply total cost divided by output. So when output is 1, total cost is 170. So our average total cost is 170 divided by 1 or 170. Likewise, when output is 2, our total cost is 220. But we're going to divide by our quantity of 2. 220 divided by 2 gives us 110. And we're going to continue in that way all the way down. And you get this U shape. Average total cost is high. And then it drops way down. But then it starts back up. And here's what that cost curve looks like. Now you should also know, think about this for a minute. Remember earlier in this lecture we were talking about that total cost equals fixed cost plus variable cost? Add together fixed and variable costs and you get total cost. The same is true with the averages. Average total cost equals average fixed cost plus average variable cost. So if you know two of these, you can find the third. So here are the, the cost curves together. First is our average total cost curve, which looks like a U. As we said before, looks like a U. Then we're going to add our average variable cost. It's not anywhere near as deep, and it's a much narrower range. Now we add our average fixed cost. Average fixed cost starts a little high, drops off, but then continues to drop off forever. So you can always find this curve when you're looking at a graph. And finally, you have the marginal cost curve. Marginal cost curve looks like a J for all the reasons that we've discussed. And so that's all for today on Dr. Archer's lecture. Come back next time and we'll discuss more on production costs. Thanks for being here.